Welcome to the Story Fulfilled Podcast, where we deep dive into how each character and story in the Bible come together to fulfill the story of God. I'm Jay. I'm Fletcher. And I'm Abby. And today's story is about Sarai. 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 Who has another name? We'll talk about her other name later, but Sarai. So today's question, what is something dumb you've done while at someone else's house? And I think the the, the inspiration behind the question will become apparent as we go through the episode, but what is something done that you have done while at someone else's house? Mm-hmm. This was an easy one for Fletcher to answer. It was. No, it wasn't. I had to stew on it. He had a go database. My memory bank of there things a, that I've done. He had a whole Rolodex <laughs> That's of right. instances. Yeah. To See, look not at. all of them here, were at somebody else's house. That's and the here's, problem. Here's the thing. I was like naming things off and he's like, that's not dumb. That's not dumb. That was just cool. Or Some of them fun. were fun. <laughs> yeah. So This was also fun, but in hindsight, it was probably pretty dumb. So I was at my grandparents' house. And my grandmother had this nice bottle of Chanel Number no. Five perfume. I think there was two bottles, okay. but uh, my cousins and I had a very fun perfume battle where we would <laughs> run around the upstairs and just spray each other with it until my parents found out and my grandmother found out. And what exactly is the objective in a perfume battle? Spray it in their eyes. I just don't know. You know? <laughs> yeah. Cause the most smell and harm you can <laughs> with that little bottle of perfume. Right. And we emptied the thing. Wow. And Nobody was happy. That stuff ain't cheap. No, nobody was happy. And yeah, it was expensive. (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. I honestly don't remember that at all. So I don't know if I was there. She was there. Maybe she didn't. She probably blocked from her memory. See, I wasn't a bad kid, though. I didn't like to get in trouble. (laughs) Neither did I. We didn't think we were spending money, but (laughs) apparently perfume costs money. You said two things there that are not necessarily related. You said, I wasn't a bad kid and I didn't like to get into trouble. You could be a bad kid and still not like to get into trouble. Like bad so kids close. don't like to get into. There are no bad kids. Let me. Yes, there are. Yeah. Here, I'll put this. I wasn't a bad kid, but I got in trouble a lot. There we go. Is that? There we go. Yeah. Fletcher was just an energetic kid. Yeah. yeah. Very. Energetic. People interpreted it as bad in trouble. Yeah. Very <laughs> misguided. Not bad. not bad. I promise. He just needed to have things to do. <laughs> anyway, right. let's yeah. let's hear Abby's uh, Abby's story. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So at Christmas, I was visiting. This was my, this year. This was this oh, year. This, <laughs> I was this at past my, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was at my in-laws' house, and um, my brother-in-law. My so Josh has two brothers, one older and one younger. So this was the older brother. Decided he was going to go to the bathroom while everyone was cleaning up, and so we were like, they were in the bathroom, and I love where this is going. <laughs> It's going to be a poop story, I can and tell. And there's this really great song. I'm, I'll play it for you in a second. <laughs> and I showed it to his parents. I'm like, wouldn't it be funny if I just went and played this song for him? And they're like, oh, go do it. So I went downstairs with his younger brother. And we went and we played this poop song for him. And then he started singing along. His name is Connor. Connor poop. Connor, 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 Connor. Wow. 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 It goes on. Did your did your minute. in-laws say anything about this? They were laughing so hard because I also showed it. them their poop songs. This guy is so funny. Um, yeah, he has all the names ever with the name. Poop I don't think it. that's dumb. I I think it's well. You know what? I had a really hard time with this one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's and fun. I think it was dumb. As Just, my as my kids are listening right now, they're like oh, they're we, looking they, up the poop yeah, song. And there's another poop song that Nathan they love and poop. that talks about like <laughs> alphabet soup and stuff and and spelling and yeah. it's yeah. So yeah. there's so many. Yeah, there's this so episode many. is on what is it on Spotify? It's Abby, on everywhere. Spotify. Abby, you brought this episode off the rails. How do you feel about that? It's not normally you for the first time in story fulfilled for podcast the first history. First time in forever. <laughs> <No>. Wow. <laughs> oh man, I actually really had a hard time with this question as well. Uh, the well, not no, for lack the, of dumb things. Yeah, but, he had a lot of dumb things, but then he's like, "Oh no, that was at my house. That was at my or, house." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or I don't want to share that on the podcast. Or I, don't sh- <laughs> I can't admit that There's to my that. dad yet. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so my we, uh, I have a friend who we used to go 
hang out at his house quite often before school, after school. And uh, when we would get good snowfalls, we would uh, climb onto his roof and jump into the snow off of his roof. And I don't see any a part of that. That's dumb. Right. Yeah. That sounds kind I of I thought fun. you were going to tell the but then, story. But then <laughs> another, another friend pointed out to us that, uh, that he, he, he would regularly just say, oh, that's the kind of tree we used to jump out of. He used to live in Ireland. He said, we used to jump out of those trees all the time. And I was like, what? What are you, what are you talking about? Jump out of the trees. And then he showed us. And so what we did is we would climb up these trees. They were like pine-ish trees, evergreen. And you climb up kind of as high as you can. And you crawl out onto a branch a little bit. And then you just kind of let go and hold on to... Try and grab onto some branches on your way down to break the fall as you as you go down, and so it was tree Did jumping. Did it ever work? It was our, yeah, it was it always. It was we never hit the ground. Wow, hard. We never hit the ground hard. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of like a Tarzan, Georgia, the jungle falling, and they're just like slamming on leaves on their way down. Yeah, and they gently. Land. Yeah, there's actually uh, there is VHS footage of my friend at Muskoka oh my. Woods climbing a giant tree and. And it was kind of staged, and somebody was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" And he's like, "Oh, nothing!" Ah! And then he lets go, and then drops down, and it's like really funny footage, but it's VHS, so you can't. So you can. We should it find anymore. that, digitize it, and post it somewhere. Yeah. Do you have I access had... to this VHS? No. Oh, I was a guy today at work. Someone come up to me at work and was like, "Would you like this Amy Grant Christmas CD?" And I'm like. <laughs> I don't have a CD player. He's like, you don't have a CD player? You're the third person I've tried to give this to who doesn't have a CD player. Even in your car? Your car doesn't no. have one? Wow. I th- oh, you no, know, it does. Okay. But I you just didn't want to. No, I forgot Grant. about it. <laughs> like, what Grant about your CD. laptop? I, I recently yeah. saw a meme that talked about the fact that there are, like, kids now don't even understand the concept of, like, and the, the question was, like, People used to burn CDs. What does that yeah. mean? <laughs> it's like true. just the the idea they of what it them means on fire. to burn a CD, yeah. right? Yeah. To yeah, yeah, crazy. Wow, that's so. Those are some dumb things. I don't want to say us done. oldies because Jay is clearly you Way know. Older than us. Excuse um, me, <laughs> but <laughs> Jay's birthday. Is I know what a CD too. is at least. Yeah. Wow. I also know what a VHS is, which we just <laughs> right. That's about. right. Right. We would love to hear. The dumb things that you've done at someone else's house. So yeah. you can drop us a line, uh, story at bfmc.org, or you can jump on to our social media, Instagram, at Story Fulfilled. Is it at Story Fulfilled Podcast? Yeah. And try to beat and our stories. Yeah. The dumber to, things. Try to show us how dumb you are. <laughs> <laughs> you already and, know we are. We want to hear if you are. And of course, as always, we do encourage you to read the stories for yourself to get the whole picture of what is going on, and today's story takes place in Genesis. So, first of all, though, welcome back to the Story for the Podcast. This is season number five. Yeah. five. Number five is alive. This season is all about unlikely people who were used by God. Mm. So we're going to look through the, the Bible, and we're going to pick out some people who were used by God, but it's very unlikely that they would be used. So they're people that you wouldn't expect to be useful for God, but they end up changing the world. And today's story takes place in Genesis, as I mentioned, which is the first book of the Bible. And it is traditionally held as being written by Moses, although I'm taking a Old Testament course right now. And one of the books that I had to read for it the argument that he puts forth is that it's written actually post exile, mm-hmm. which is like around the time of mm-hmm. Daniel and Ezra and Nehemiah, which That's challenges the Moses Moses idea. But there are scholars in Again, both camps, yeah. and there's a lot of people arguing about all over this topic and yeah. basically any topic when it comes to dates in the Bible and yeah. who wrote what. You're going to find an argument. Yeah, so, totally. Um, yeah. So, and, and and as you read through Genesis, in the first uh, Genesis one through eleven is kind of the creation, like it's a creation and the flood, and there's lots of genealogies, and this is kind of the sometimes referred to as the preamble of Genesis, and then we get into Abram and his story, and then we begin to talk about. So up until then, it's kind of God and his relationship with the world and and now god is creating a relationship with 
a group of people. And so today's story is about the mother of the nation of Israel, who is Sarai, and she is the wife of Abram. That's right. Not the husband of Abram, which I wrote and typoed <laughs> like, a, right. like a crazy person. No. <laughs> anyway, so again, like we've just said, there's arguments on everything. So the dating of Abraham is another thing that there is a lot of argumentation yeah. on. Um, so between 2100 to 1800 BC is the range that we're going to give for Abraham. Again, look it up, find out what people are saying. People that are smarter than us have made conclusions, but right. uh, find out for yourself. Go read the passages and go read the scholarship on it. It's, it's interesting stuff. And just try to, so, yeah. So, it, something else to say just about that, like when there is argument or disagreement about when a book is written or when a person lived or existed, an important question to ask is what, what is affected by landing in a certain camp of belief and uh, how does that affect the story? Uh, and what does that mean to me and my faith? Uh, because sometimes sometimes it matters and sometimes it really doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so, but it's important for you to just ask those questions as you come to the text to um, kind of make that decision for yourself. And, and definitely in this case, if somebody says Abraham was born in 2100 BC, not 18, I'm not going to say they're yeah. not a Christian. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, go figure that out for yourselves. There, there's a lot of information on it. But anyway, we're telling about the story about uh, Abraham and Sarah. Sorry, Abram and Sarai. Not, right. We'll get to them eventually. So yeah. they were from this place called Ur of the Chaldees. And they moved to Haran with his father, Terah, and the rest of their family when they were younger. And then they lived there until Abraham was about 75 years old. They moved to Haran. Uh, so Ur of the Chaldees was a Mesopotamian city, and they were known to worship a moon deity, just like, uh, and there was a whole Mesopotamian pantheon mm -hmm. going on at the time. So like we've said, I think a couple seasons ago, Abram and Sarah and the rest of their family, they were probably be pagans, right? They weren't mm -hmm. some small group of people that knew the one true God beforehand. They participated in the culture just like everybody else did. And mm -hmm. so they were, you know, pantheists from Mesopotamia who moved to Haran, um, and they weren't special in any way before that. Um, and then another thing that's cool to note about Abraham is because of how he's described, he was probably a, like a wealthy man and he had lots of property, lots of animals, lots of servants. And so when they traveled, they didn't just, you know, pick up a donkey and, and move. They took their whole camp with them. They took their servants, they took their animals and they right. moved as a group, as a caravan sort of thing. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So as Fletcher said, they were from Ur, which was a city in southern Mesopotamia, which we know is in modern day Iraq. They moved to Haran, which Fletcher also said, a city <laughs> in northern Syria, I'm just listening. <laughs> which is actually in modern day Turkey. They traveled through and eventually settled in Canaan, which we know is modern day Israel, but also parts of Jordan and Syria and Lebanon, kind of that whole area. Mm -hmm. um, Canaan is not a modern place, so. And they also stayed in Egypt, which is modern-day Egypt. Always. Every time. It gets us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, finally, they stayed in Gerar of the Philistines, which is modern-day Israel. Mm -hmm. right. Let's get into it. So the first thing we hear about Abraham, it's Genesis 12, very first time we hear Abraham's call, or Abram's call. And basically, God appears to Abraham, and he says, take you and your family uh, to Canaan, to the land that I'll show you, and I will make you the father of a great nation, and, you know, you're going to become famous and blessed mm. and the entire world is going to be blessed through you. And famously, Abraham believes God Abram. and Abram <laughs> believes <laughs> God. <laughs> we'll get a counter going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abram <laughs> believes God and listens to him and moves his family to Canaan. You know, what's interesting is just as we talk about. So Abram was not a God worshiper up until this point. Nobody was that we know of. What's interesting is it says like the text begins with and God said to Abram. Which leads me to wonder, is there anyone else that God said this to leading up to this time? And they were like, what? Uh, what no. Who is this guy? Yeah. yeah. Tell me where I'm going first or I'm not going or whatever. Like, what, is it possible that there, that God actually said these words to someone else and they didn't respond? Mm -hmm. Because as we read later, uh, Abram believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Absolutely. Which... Just and which a, I, what I find cool is if we didn't have those previous 12 chapters, it would just be the Lord appeared to Abraham. You'd be like, who's this Lord? Who's God? Right. What, what is he talking right. about? We don't know who this is. So the whole previous 12 chapters are telling us this is who God is and this is what he's done. Yeah. 
and now he's talking to a specific man in history right now right. called Abraham or yeah. called Abram. Abram. So yeah, they start moving all their stuff to to Canaan. And they get there and they find there's a famine. What do you do when there's a famine? You go somewhere that has food. You panic. So you panic. <laughs> and he panicked for sure. And he just kept on going south down to Egypt where they had lots of food. Mm-hmm. And when they get to, to Egypt, Abram's like getting nervous. He's like, okay, my wife's really beautiful. I don't want them to kill me for my wife. Because right. that's what they do. Um, so he says, okay, Sarah, can you do me a favor? Can you tell them you're my sister and it'll all be okay? They won't kill me. You know, things will go smoothly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Sarai agrees and tells them that Abraham or Abram is his, get ding on the tally, <laughs> yeah. is his brother. Um, and Pharaoh, you know, meets Sarai. Oh, this is a nice, beautiful woman. I'm going to take her into my, con- like into my, my court, take her, mm-hmm. become a concubine. And uh, Sarah goes, obviously. You're not going to say no to the, to the right, Pharaoh. Right. God starts putting these plagues on Pharaoh's house because Sarah was living with them and wasn't supposed to be. Right. And and Pharaoh eventually finds out, you know, this is happening because you're here. You're going to go back and I got to have a word with Abraham here. So yeah. he goes, what have you done? You've lied to me. You've done this terrible thing. Take your wife, take your people and leave my country now. Like you, causing plagues here. I don't yeah. I don't want him around. Yep. So he answer, he asks, eventually asks Abraham to get the heck out of there and he does. He sends them away, and they're back over to Canaan. So now they're, you know, they're they're shepherds. They're taking their animals all through Canaan, and God appears to Abram again, and he tells them the same promise: "I'm going to make you a great nation. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you this land, and through you, all the nations are going to be blessed." Yep. And Abram says, "You know, I don't have an heir. Is my nephew going to be my my heir? I don't have a son. What's going on?" Yeah. And God actually then adds a promise, and he says that he would have a son. Mm-hmm. So years later, you know, Sarai, I think this is somewhere like 10 years later. So they've been waiting a while, still no son. I might want to mention Abraham's like 90 something at this point. Sarah is also 80, 80, 90. They're up there. And Sarai tells Abraham, you know, God has stopped me from having a child. I'm too old and I can't have children. Maybe you should have a son through one of my servants, Hagar. Mm. And Abraham ends up agreeing and, and sleeps with Hagar and then she gets pregnant. And then... Hagar is pregnant and she starts to disobey Sarah. Now you remember Hagar is Sarah's servant mm-hmm. and Sarah starts treating her poorly. Like, you know, if a servant starts disobeying you, she acted out. And as a result, Sarah started treating her badly. Right. Um, eventually Hagar's son is born and his name is Ishmael. And God actually appeared to Abraham. And later he now tells him that he's to Abram, that he's no longer Abram, but his name is going to be Abraham, which means right. father of many. Many. Not mm-hmm. just, so Abram was great yeah. father and now it's father of many. Father of many. Which right. At and this time still seems. Still not true. He's yeah. just got one son, right? <laughs> and now he also, while changing Abraham's name, he says, Sarah is also going to have a new name. She's, she used to be Sarai, which was this name given to her in Mesopotamia. Mm-hmm. And I think it, I, I read it has to do something with a name of a, another god or in the pantheon changes it to Sarah, which is a more Canaanite and and that type of language, but right. changes it and says she will also be blessed and she will be a mother of many nations. Yeah. And while this is happening, Abraham's like, yeah, right. How can she be a mother at 90 years old? This isn't going to happen. You know, Israel is going to be the one that continues on and, right. and accepts these blessings. God says, no, Sarah's going to be the one. She's going to have a son a year from now. And you're going to name him Isaac. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be the one that continues the covenant. Mm -hmm. And then he says, you know, what about my son Ishmael? And he says, well, Ishmael is also going to get a blessing. He's your son, but it's not the same blessing. It's not going to be a part of the covenant people. So after this, a couple, it doesn't say how much later, but it's relatively recently after this. Three days later. Three days later. (laughs) (laughs) The the SpongeBob SpongeBob cut scene there. (laughs) So yeah, Abraham meets these three men and the Bible basically implies that they're angels and that it's that it's God right. appearing to Abraham. Right. And he runs over to them and brings them into his tent and feeds them and starts talking to Abraham and says, you're going to have a son in a year. I'm going to come back and you're going to have a son. Mm-hmm. And then Sarah, you know, kind of laughs to herself and says, yeah, right. And then <laughs> the angel like kind of notices Sarah laughs and goes, why'd you laugh? Is, is, is anything impossible for the Lord? Right. And she's like, oh, I didn't laugh. I didn't laugh. And yeah, he's yeah. like, you laughed. you laughed. You laughed. And next year, you're going to have a son. And we'll, we'll move on and see what happens, I right. guess. Yeah. Um, so another <laughs> quick story between, uh, 
I don't want to spoil it, between what just happened and what's going to happen later, <laughs> uh, they end up going to a land called uh, Gerar, Gerar, however you pronounce it, is probably better than mine. But uh, <laughs> it's the land of the Philistines, and he is doing the same thing. Sarah, you're not, yeah, right. not my wife. You're my sister. So they go, and Abraham pulls the same hijinks, but this time... Well, of course, Sarah is taken into the, the court and to become a concubine of the king. And <laughs> he gets a vision from God yeah, and says, you're going to die for what you've done to right. this woman. And he goes, oh, what I, did I, do? I, I haven't done anything. And he's like, well, if this is Abraham's wife. And he goes, oh, I didn't know. And yeah. God's like, I know you didn't know. So give her back and we won't have any trouble. Right. And send Abraham away. So... Uh, Mibelech actually does a really nice thing. Like he says, look, Abraham, you've caused me to sin. I need to repent of this basically. And he yeah. gives Abraham a bunch of gifts and sends him off and gives him blessings and lets him graze in his pastures because he's nearly committed. Now this was a big thing is nearly committed adultery with right. him. And that would have been a big thing for him. Yep. And, and he did not want that to happen. So he sends him away. Abraham blesses him and God lifts this curse that was going to be upon him. Um, because he had taken Sarah in. Mm. And now, so you think, okay, well, Abimelech's not really guilty, and he right. gets away scot-free, nothing happens to him. Um, and they ended up leaving. Now, finally, the uh, the big, <laughs> big important part of the story. Right. Sarah gets pregnant at the age of like 90 and gives birth to a son, and they name him Isaac, mm -hmm. just as promised. And that's exactly what they said was going to happen, and it happened. And when Sarah gives birth, she goes, God has brought me laughter. And that's right. what Isaac means is laughter. And she says, all who hear about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby? Uh -huh. Yet I have given Abraham a son in this old age. Then as Isaac grew, um, she caught Hagar and Ishmael, the other son and, and, the, conc and the servant, making fun of Isaac. Right. And Sarah's like, I'm not having this. This guy is not my son. I don't want him next to my son. Right. And I need them to leave. So she talks to Abraham who says, well, this is my son. I don't want to send him away. And God says, listen, listen to Sarah. I will bless Ishmael no matter what. Mm -hmm. Focus on this family and I'll take care of the other one. So they ended up sending Ishmael away. And then Sarah raises Isaac and then eventually dies at the ripe old age of 127. Yeah. She's buried in a place called Hebron. Wow. What a life. <laughs> That's a long one. Sarah. Sarai. Sarai and Sarah. So what makes her unlikely? That's the question. That is. I mean, the so the the beginning point which made Abram unlikely in the first place as well is that they weren't God worshippers to begin with. And so uh, we see that God has chosen who he will use and what he'll use them for. So that's, I think that's a huge factor in and that. Along that line too, I don't think it, they weren't not only God worshipers, sorry, not God worshipers, but they weren't necessarily good people either. They right. were just called out of their place. And it doesn't say Abraham was righteous. It was, right. it was his belief that caused him to be righteous. Know, so he wasn't necessarily, you know, the best guy either. Yeah. We know nothing really about him, but, and I guess to, to contrast that, I believe the text when it talks about Noah does say that he was righteous. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so we do have an understanding of even a fear and in instilled fear of God that is possible at this time, which we don't, don't hear about, don't Abraham, hear about right. with, with Abraham. Um, and I think the other, so, I mean, there's the, the barrenness as well, which we can talk about, but I think the other part too is, um, oftentimes when we talk about one of the great things about the Bible is that it's honest about its people. Mm -hmm. it, like there are shortcomings that people have that we read about. And we talk often about Abraham and his shortcomings, we talk about his lying about Sarah on more than one occasion um, and just different things and, and different people throughout the Bible that have done things that it's honest about. This whole Hagar thing was Sarah's idea. Mm -hmm. She, she was the one who said, listen, I know God has said that he's going to give you a son. Obviously it's not me, right? So mm -hmm. use, use my servant uh, kind of, usurp God's plan and, and go about it this way. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing, and I think we've talked about this before in the, in the podcast is that, um, Hagar came about, they have Hagar as a servant because she was given to them 
when they left Egypt. So they went to Egypt because of the famine. They lied and they were sent away with all kinds of belongings mm-hmm. and um, and treasure and servants, it says. And so her Egyptian servant, Hagar, came about because they lied and, mm-hmm. and Abraham... They'd messed up previously and messed up this previously. is just an addition to that. Yeah, yeah so absolutely. it's like just this whole continuing mm-hmm. mess up that, that continues to... Um, follow them and they're reminded of how they took their trust away from from God Um, and so yeah unlikely that she would be used because she had this horrible idea to use Hagar to to have the child to try to yeah surplant her own ideas and try to make make it happen by herself as opposed to waiting yeah yeah and then yeah of course she was she was barren so you know that's I, a big deal. It's a big deal now. Let alone back then. It, it, the language that it used when it talks about being barren. It's like you've taken the joy from my eyes and you've right. taken the joy from my life because this it, how much it meant to her to have a son. Yeah. And then when Isaac is born, just the what that meant to Sarah was was so huge. And taking that away, and just the idea of barrenness is one that you see throughout the Old Testament. And mm. God repairing that barrenness is showing how how he can do that and how Sarah is now being used by God through yeah. God's miracle in the first place. Yeah. We don't see very many 90 plus year old women having, having no, babies. No, no, we do not. <laughs> no. Be pretty cool. I mean, it might not end up well though. Yeah. Cause yeah. it's pretty dangerous. But. Yeah. A pregnancy is yeah. already hard on a body. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. How does this story and contribute to the rest of the st- fulfilling of the story of God throughout the Bible? Well, I think uh, one way in particular, as we talk about the mistakes that Sarah made and Abraham as well, uh, is that our mistakes don't disqualify us from being used by God. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we, we, I know when we talk to people, when you share Jesus with people, a lot of the time the kind of the protest toward putting your faith, someone's putting their faith in Jesus is, well, I've, I've done a lot. And uh, God would never accept me because of the the horrible things that I've done, um, and so there. That's you know that's one lie that we can expose with this story. And then the other reality is for us as believers, we've put our faith in Jesus, and we fall sometimes, and, and there's sin that still finds its way into our lives, and we deal with that, and sometimes that leads us to a place where we're like, well, I I need to just give up or I I need, God can't use me or God doesn't want to use me because of what's present in my life. And this story, I think, puts that into perspective for us, Mm -hmm. which says, of course he does. He still does. He, and sin is God's issue to deal with. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. he does it through Jesus. Uh, and he wants us to, he wants us to pay attention to it. He wants us to acknowledge it and bring it before him. Uh, but it's his and Jesus dealt with it on the cross. And so we need to not allow that to stand in the way of being used by him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just adding along those lines, there's the, I'm too much, I'm too bad of a person for God to use me. And then I'm not enough of a person for yeah. God to use me is the other yeah. aspect, right? This is what this whole season is about. We're going to talk about a lot of different characters who are like this, but you know, I'm, I'm barren. I am weak. I am not smart. I uh, stutter. I, well, we'll talk about that with Moses in in a couple episodes, but no matter what, if if it's a physical issue, if it's an emotional issue, if it's a a mental thing, that's not going to stop God from using you. You you not being enough is not the problem. And we see that with who God chooses to use throughout the Bible is God's the one that's going to be enough uh, to use you and for his purposes. So let him do that. Yeah. (laughs) As ridiculous as his plan may seem. Yes. Wow. That's a good word, Fletcher. You not being enough is not the problem. Mm-hmm. Right. She's writing it down. You'll I see am. it on her Instagram. Hopefully. <laughs> <You will. laughs> anyway, thank you so much for joining us back for season five. That's we right. hope to uh, hope to hear you or see you listening again. See you listening. See you listening next week. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.